Each gift is an invitation and provides the means to participate in the work of Jesus. We are being invited into a working relationship in the operations of the Trinity. Come, connect with God, be aware of the gifts God has given you, share them for the transformation of God's world. Let us worship together. Our opening hymn is Many Gifts, One Spirit. Let's join together in singing. to connect with God and to connect with one another in this way. 
Let me just remind you all that this coming week we will have another opportunity to give sandwiches to those who are living in Tent City and who come to Roof Above, what we used to know as Urban Ministries. They are coming to, to get lunch, and so your sandwiches of bread, meat, and cheese only are really fulfilling a need. So again, we are collecting those on the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. You can drop them off here at the church between 10 and 10.30. Thanks to, um, there are many church members who are um, participating and helping make those deliveries, so thank you for that. Also, through February, we will continue to have Undie Sunday and collect underwear and socks for those who are living out on the streets so that they have clean clothes, um, something clean and fresh to wear. So you can send us new packages of men and women's underwear and socks. You can drop those off um, right on the front porch. We have a wagon set out there, and we will make sure that those get distributed and sent to those who um, might need them. I hope that you will participate and connect with me on Wednesdays for a Lunch and Learn where we take what we're hearing here in worship and we continue to unpack it as, as we each strive to not just be members of the church, but to be faithful disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. So I hope that you will take advantage of that. The Zoom link goes out in our weekly email. It's a brief time, about 30 minutes, but it's another opportunity for you to grow deeper and to connect with other people in the congregation. You are all welcome to be a part of that. I look forward to sharing with you kind of future worship plans. Um, as we begin to know more right now, we still are providing this opportunity for worship virtually, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe Palm Sunday and Easter we'll be able to gather on the front lawn and then maybe look at offering a way for us to gather indoors Again, that's all, you know, we're just taking it a day at a time. Um, and I'm thankful that you all are putting the love of neighbor, um, you're, you're really putting that into action because we're keeping space safe and we're keeping one another safe with love. So thank you for embodying um, the faithfulness and the love that Jesus Christ displayed with your brothers and sisters. We're going to move into a time of prayer, and um, I'm going to have Charles play a piece of music to help us prepare for prayer. And I invite you to just clear away any distractions, maybe light a candle, take a deep breath, and settle into this space where Christ's presence is with you. Loving and gracious God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, we wait, we watch, we long for you. Renew our powers, 
refresh our spirits, restore our well-being, for you give new strength to the faint and power to the powerless. May your church be found working among those who lack resources or rights. May we seek to care for those who cannot care for themselves. We pray for the lowly and the humiliated. We pray for relief organizations, especially Roof Above, one in which we are so connected. God, may they be a place of strength and refuge. We pray for great powers of the world, strong nations and mighty governments, that their power may be used properly so that the poor are protected, the weak are not exploited, and no one is oppressed. We pray for multinational corporations who often wield more power than many governments, that in their pursuit of profit they may take those steps of compassion and concern, which will only benefit all. We give thanks for all who have cared for us, who have given their gifts to us in times of weakness, for those who have uplifted our spirits and who have given us new hope. We pray for our family and friends, especially any who are finding life difficult in this moment. We pray for any in our community that may feel neglected or rejected. We pray for all who are in weakness of body, mind, spirit, all who have come to the end of their tether. We think of those who are losing their mobility or agility, those who are losing their memories, and all who have lost grip on reality. Those who no longer trust in anyone and those who doubt the love of God. We think of all who are caring for loved one in illness. And we give thanks. Thanks that Christ is our healer and companion on the way. We give thanks that Christ will not allow us to be lost. We pray for loved ones departed, who are now renewed and refreshed in the love and perpetual light of God. May the light of the world truly be that lamp set out on a lampstand, so that that light touches and leads all. Continue to walk with us on this journey. And may our footsteps be firm in your amazing grace. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and that we unite our many voices together as one to pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. From the letter to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 16. Therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you received from God. Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love, and make an effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties you together. You are one body and one Spirit, just as God has called you in one hope. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
and one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. God has given grace to each one of us, measured out by the gift that is given by Christ. That's why scripture says, when he climbed up to the heights, he captured prisoners and gave gifts to people. What does the phrase he climbed up mean if it doesn't mean that he had first gone down to the lower regions of the earth? The one who went down is the same one who climbed up above all the heavens so that he might fill everything. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. His purpose was to equip Equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we reach the unity of faith and knowledge of God's Son. God's goal is for us to become mature adults, to be fully grown, measured by the standard of the fullness of Christ. As a result, we aren't supposed to be infants any longer who can be tossed and blown around by every wind that comes from teaching with deceitful scheming and the tricks people play to deliberately mislead others. Instead, by speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way into Christ, who is the head. The whole body grows from Christ as it is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds up with love as each one does its part. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing together a song that is new to me. Charles introduced it to me, and it is just beautiful. It's called There's a Song. It's from the Faith We Sing hymnal, and we're going to sing this as we prepare to hear God's word.
I think that is just beautiful. And I can't wait until we have the sanctuary full and we can all hear each other's voices singing that. Okay, just to recap, because we're going on a journey here. We're going on this journey as disciples of Jesus Christ. And our journey is always going toward Christian perfection, which means loving God and loving neighbor. We go on this journey knowing that the path, the path is paved with God's grace that empowers us, that awakens us, that calls us forward, um, that claims us as beloved. We learned that our first steps along this path are steps of prayer and biblical meditation. And then last week we talked about our next steps, our corporate worship and small group, that we never, as Christian disciples, we never take this journey alone, that we always do it as the one body of Christ, being together. And then today we take our next steps, Steps that talk about spiritual gifts, why our gifts are given and needed. I think it's fair to say that, of course, God is powerful enough to do whatever God wants to do in this world and doesn't really need us. But that is not the way God has ordered things. God has chosen and shows us from the beginning of time and as is written from Genesis that God has chosen us, humanity, to be co-creators in building the kingdom of God. God has always wanted humanity to be involved. Go figure. God wants you. God wants me. To help build the kingdom. So the question for you, the question for me today is, are you ready to stop being a spectator and start being a participant in the building? It was my last year of seminary. I was living in New York City. My seminary was in New York City. And I had just finished a summer program called CPE, which is Clinical Pastoral Education where I spent really long hours the whole entire summer in the hospital, um, not just learning about pastoral care, but learning a lot about who I am and who God has called and created me to be. I was with this incredible group of other colleagues, and one of those colleagues that was in my group at CPE was another seminary student. She was, still is, Episcopalian and was finishing seminary to become ordained as an Episcopal priest. And somehow during the course of our conversation, we must have had a day where we were talking about things we enjoyed doing. And I happened to mention that I enjoyed baking. I'm not a great baker or anything, but I love to be in the kitchen I love to work on a recipe, and I love to have the finished product, and of course I love eating baked goods too. So it was really a surprise to me, actually, that she came to me at the end of summer, the beginning of fall, and asked if I would bake her wedding cake. She was going to be getting married in the late fall, and she wanted me to make her wedding cake. And I must have had a moment of forgetting myself because I actually said, yes, I've never made a wedding cake before. I had made cakes, but this was somebody's wedding cake. I mean, that's kind of an important part of a wedding ceremony and reception. It's a big deal. She told me she wanted a spice cake, and so I spent time researching and finding the right recipe and finding the right set of baking pans that would fit in my itty bitty tiny New York City apartment oven. I researched fall flowers that I could sugar and use as decorations to sit on top of the cake. I felt honored. The cake was made and it was not very pretty. But I can honestly say that I made it with a great deal of love. And I delivered it that day to the reception site, which was in our quad in the seminary chapel. 
and I was proud to be a part of her special day, my small part of something much bigger. And I was amazed that she asked me, not a baker, not a professional, she asked me to contribute to her special day. Brothers and sisters, on this journey of discipleship, it is important for us to realize that each one of us has been claimed and given a gift from God, or maybe two or three gifts, but it is a gift that is needed for the building of the kingdom. Scholar and theologian Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message translation of the Bible, he writes these words, each gift is an invitation and provides the means to participate in the work of Jesus. We are being invited into a working relationship of the Trinity. We have to know that. We have to claim that. And second, we have to believe and really lean into knowing that our gift is needed, it is worthy, it is important, and it is no better than someone else's because each of us has been given some part to play. Each gift is needed. None is better or more important. I know we know that. We learned that when we did plays in school and the director or the teacher always told us that there were no small parts, that every part was important. We have to know that though and we have to like really embrace it with our heart and embody that fact. And then we also have to really know that until all the parts, all the parts are working for God's kingdom, then we will never be able to function as one body. We will never be able to build it to God's completion. Because if one part is left out, that is a missing piece of the puzzle. That's why it's so crucial for the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, to reflect and embrace the diversity that God has created. We need one another. So, what are we using these gifts for? The kingdom, yes, but what does that actually look like? Go back to the scripture from Ephesians. There is a word in that scripture that comes from, let me look at the verse, it comes in the 12th verse. God's purpose is to equip. God, or the Spirit's purpose, is to equip us. Now, we need to unpack that word. It's crucial to, at least for me, understanding spiritual gifts and using our gifts and, and how that might look. Because equipping is not just handing out or making sure that people have something. It isn't just about training people to make sure that they know how to use their gift or even know what their gift is. The Greek word equip there in that passage, it comes from a family of Greek words that can also mean healing, setting of a broken bone, and work towards rehabilitation. Now that for me, when I studied that this past week and I thought about, I've been given a gift, not to just fill time in the church, not to just sign up for a committee or sign up for a project or a program, but that the gift that I have been given is for rehabilitation or for setting of broken things. That is powerful. And that God trusts me to be a part of that. We see that same word, equip, come up when Jesus goes out and calls the disciples and they're in the boats and we're told that they're fishermen and that they're there mending their nets. That mending nets is the same family of Greek words of equipping, weaving back together, putting the frayed ends back together, repairing brokenness instead of just cutting it off. Do you see the power that you have 
to transform the world, that your gift is not just to fill time, but it is to fill brokenness in individuals' lives, in the community that we live. The ancient Greeks understood the meaning of equip in this multifaceted way. Setting of broken bones, uh, mending nets so that fish fishermen could catch more things. In politics, it meant bringing together opposing sides. God longs to equip us so that there's no holes in our nets. There's no brokenness in our community, no opposing fractions and factions in our relationships. Dr. Guy Sales is a pastor of Asheville, um, a Baptist church in Asheville, and he writes this. This understanding of equipping means that leadership, and that's you, disciples. It's not just me. It's not just those who are up here. That's each and every one of us. The understanding of equipping means that you and I, we are part of a crucial dimension of healing and restoration. All of us have experiences which tear us. We all have times when fatigue or failure tempts to give up on ourselves, tempts us to give up on ourselves. Disciples recognize that. Sometimes what people need most is not to refine their skills or avail themselves of more training. Instead, what they need is grace, mercy, renewal, confidence. They need to know that it's always possible to begin and begin again. The reason God has given you a gift is so that you can be about the work of restoration. We are called to help heal the brokenness of the world. And again, I am reminded that our community, right here in Plaza Midwood, they are looking at the vine and they are looking at all of us who are apart, looking at followers of Jesus Christ to see how we are engaging in the world. Will they find equipped disciples who are seeking to heal brokenness? Will they find disciples who can fill the voids with love instead of greed, with acceptance instead of racism? Will they find disciples who are building bridges instead of cutting one another off? What gift has God given you and how can you use it this week to equip, to restore, to heal? When you share that gift, that is evangelism. Evangelism is not knocking on doors and handing out pieces of paper. Evangelism is embodying the good news. And God's good news is always one of restoration and healing and building of the kingdom. Your vocation as Frederick Beekner said, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. We do this together, brothers and sisters in Christ. We do this healing and restoration together. You pay me as your pastor. It doesn't mean that I do all the work for us. I'm here to shepherd and guide and participate in your spiritual growth and to also work on mine. And here, the church is here to give you opportunities to express your gift. Are you ready to make those steps? Steps of equipping, using your gifts for the healing and restoration of the world. It might not look very big. It might be as simple as baking a cake. Let us pray. Oh God, for the gifts you have given to each and every one of us. We don't have to compare our gift to another person because you have told us that what you have given is needed for the restoration of the world. Oh God, for all of the broken places and spaces 
that are in people's lives, that are in our community's life, may we go and stand there and mend and bridge and offer grace. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn is a Wesley hymn, Christ from whom all blessings flow. Let us sing together. parts working together for the building of God's kingdom, you have been equipped with a gift to go out and offer healing to this world. May it start with just a small step, and may it be so in you and in me. Amen and amen. Amen.